There's no one like Rembrandt. Other artists give you paintings. Rembrandt gives you life. It doesn't matter whether it's biblical scenes or self-portraits. What you get from him is humanity, raw, honest, warts and all. His output was vast and his life a riches to rags roller coaster. He fell from fame and fortune to loss, loneliness and ruin. For the first time, the National Gallery has brought together works from the final devastating years of Rembrandt's life. 20 drawings, 30 prints and 40 of his finest paintings from collections all over the world. Rembrandt is such um, a thoughtful and um, brilliant craftsman that if you look so closely and attentively at his works and you can really feel his emotions with each line, each brush stroke. Those last few years, it's a catalogue of misfortunes, oh, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you go through it, it's really recipe for disaster. In 1656 is the bankruptcy. 1663, Hendrikia dies. 1668, Titus dies. That's his son. That's his son, um, his only surviving son. And that's a year before his own death. This is a brilliant example of Rembrandt's humanity, I think. It's said to depict an episode in the Bible. This is an engaged or married couple. And what comes out of the painting, I think, is the tenderness, the great intimacy between this couple. He with his hand on or just under her breast, she with her left hand touching his right hand. It's a wonderfully, wonderfully soft and human painting. Technically brilliant, apparently. I'm no art expert, but technically brilliant because of the way in which this sleeve in particular has got very heavily applied paint, which makes it, again, it gives it a kind of three-dimensional quality, really. It seems to come out of the painting. But for me, the thing that really attracts me about it is that it's, it's so tender, so intimate. Rembrandt's later years were also remarkable for the experimental techniques he adopted. This apparently is the appropriate angle for viewing this painting, which was intended originally to be displayed high on the walls of the town hall in Amsterdam. The scene depicted in the painting is of a conspiratorial meeting at a feast in the forest, when the tribes which originally inhabited the area, now marked out as the Netherlands, decided to rise up against the Romans. There are a lot of people who are raving about the fact that this painting is appearing in Britain for the first time, but I have to confess, it doesn't really do it for me. And it, I think the reason it doesn't do it for me is that I'm being kind of corrupted by much modern painting, so I don't find this as revolutionary as it was in its day. In its time, this was an absolutely astonishing use not just of light, but of an almost impressionistic feel to this conspiracy. Rembrandt is perhaps the most recognizable old master in the world. He painted about 80 self-portraits in all sorts of guises, the penniless artist, the Renaissance nobleman, soldier, saint, survivor. This exhibition assembles self-portraits from the final years of his life. And this may be the last self-portrait he painted. We see a man who's been through the mill, who's been bankrupt, who's lost his mistress, who's lost his wife, who's lost his child. And he stares out at us with the expression of a man who's been through it but hasn't been crushed by it. And in the year this painting was done, he died. And he was buried in the churchyard where his mistress and his son were buried, leaving behind a few paintings and a few clothes.
If you're an art connoisseur, you can doubtless marvel at Rembrandt's innovations, his brilliant, brilliant discoveries in new ways of applying paint or rendering light. But I don't think you need to be an expert because what we see in these paintings is humanity, humanity in all its beauty and all its carbuncles. They're us. Thank you.